example is when we don't acknowledge God and we start to look to natural things or created things apart from God, divorced from God, and we are looking to attain some type of spiritual insight or enlightenment apart from God through created things or through nature. That's, that's, that's what new age is really. And it talks about this in Romans 1 25. It says they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is forever worthy of praise. He is forever worthy of praise. Amen. So God is forever worthy of praise and we will always acknowledge him that it says in Colossians 1 16 for in him all things were created things in heaven and on earth visible and invisible all things were created through him and for him amen hallelujah it's talking about how everything was created through Christ Jesus the word in the beginning and just throughout the Bible, it talks about the, the natural world and how it can reflect God's divine nature and how we can actually grow in wisdom from learning from the natural world. It says in Proverbs 6, verse 6, Walk in the manner of the ant, O slacker, observe, observe its way. And it's talking about how we can gain wisdom from, from looking at God's creatures, His creation. Uh, all throughout Job, it talks about different creatures in there. It, it talks about Leviathan and the different things we can learn from looking at God's creation about, about our Maker, our Creator. So, what God had been sharing me about this season was related to nature. Um, this is coming from something um, that I've learned through studying uh, the natural world. And so uh, a couple, a few weeks ago, uh, I had gone out on my front porch and there was this very large winged creature that I had never seen before. It w looks like a butterfly or a moth. It was about this big. Um, it was giant, the most giant moth butterfly thing I'd ever seen. And it had bright green wings. And on each of its wings, it had what looked like an eye on each of its wings. And then it also had these large antenna. And I had never seen anything like it. So um, I was, you know, looking at it and observing it and trying to figure out what it was. And I went and looked it up and I learned that it was something called a luna moth which are here, um, they're, they're pretty common here in, a, in the United States, but often they come out at night, so we may not necessarily see them during the day, but this was the middle of the day. This giant green luna moth was on my porch. Um, so I was learning different things about the luna moth, and then um, the next day I went back out and there were two of them, two giant luna moths sitting on my front porch and so it really got my attention and I knew that this was something that the Lord wanted me to learn more about and pay more attention to and learn from. And so, first of all, Luna Moth, Luna means moon. And we know from the Bible that the Hebrew calendar, um, the months were set according to the moon. So each month started with a new moon and a new moon moon marked the beginning of a new month and so they followed you know a, a weekly cycle they followed a monthly cycle and so the fact that this was named luna moth or moon uh it's it's suggesting cycles a cycle um or a new a new season a new season a start to a new season and I looked up about the Luna Moth, about its life cycle, and like many caterpillars or butterflies, it starts as an egg, it turns into a caterpillar, and in its caterpillar phase, it's, it goes around and it eats leaves. So in this phase, it's, it's a caterpillar, it's crawling on its belly, it's eating as much as possible, 
so that it can grow. So it's just, you know, we've all heard or read the book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. It's just going around eating leaves so that it can grow. And all at, at that point, all of the energy is going into it growing and getting bigger. And then it goes into a stage where it spins a cocoon. Um, it crawls, it, it sits in that cocoon. This is a stage where it's just dormant. And at the end of that stage, it emerges. And when it emerges, it now has wings. And so that is the adult stage of the Luna Moth cycle is that it emerges with its wings. And once its wings have dried out, it's ready to fly. And at that point it goes on and the, the whole purpose of that season of its life is to go out and find a mate and reproduce reproduce so it's a stage of productivity now it's time to go out and produce the next generation and so there are a few things that i had gleaned from learning about the luna moth that i felt led to share that were reflecting of this time and this season in the body of christ first of all they're green they're green bright green and green represents new life. It represents freshness. In the Bible, it often talks about green, green leaves on a tree. It talks about a tree staying green, which means it stays fresh, it stays vibrant. So it, it represents that life. It represents renewal. Um, it represents fruitfulness, productivity. Um, it represents, green can represent prosperity and, and prospering, prospering in health, prospering in wealth, um, and fruitfulness, production, all of those things. Also a new start. And something I have been sensing from the Lord regarding the new start is that some of you have launched out you have emerged from your cocoon and you've launched out into a new start and that the new start has been very rocky for many in the body of christ like they've they've launched out of the cocoon season and i know um there are many other prophetic people who have been talking about that cocoon season and and comparing the pandemic to um being in a cocoon and now emerging from it but there are many who have launched out and launched into a new season, a new start, but that, that new start has been very rocky. But what I have been hearing from the Lord is start again, like, like start again, like your new start has been rocky, but some of the best of new beginnings can start out rocky. So just because you're a new start, you've had some bumps along the way, some of the best of new beginnings can start that way. And what I have been sensing from the Lord is start again. So start again, start afresh. And something else about the Luna Moth during this stage of its life cycle is that it has wings and it flies. And what I had been hearing from the Lord regarding that is that animals always behave according to how they were created by their very nature by God. So what I mean by that is that an eagle flies. <laughs> an eagle does not crawl along the ground on its belly like a snake would, right? because that's just not in its nature. It's in the nature of the way that it was created is to fly. And so that's what an eagle does. And the Lord was speaking to me about this season that many are in, um, this stage of your life. There may have been a stage of your life where you crawled around on the ground like a caterpillar, but that now you have been made a new creation and that in this stage of your life, it's the stage to fly. And that when you are in the flying stage, then it, it is a perversion of God's order and creation to try to go back to crawling on the ground. So uh, a moth, a butterfly that now has wings, 
would never then go back and start crawling on their ground. <laughs> so what the Lord is saying is that some of you, you are in a, a new season, a new stage with God. You have been made a new, a new creation, a, a new creature in Christ, and you have been given wings and it's inappropriate for you then to go back to crawling on the ground. So don't go back to crawling on the ground. When God has given you wings, it's time to use those wings to fly in the name of Jesus. And uh, something else is that um, for the Luna Moth, they have eyes on their wings, what so looks like eyes on the, on the wing. If I can figure out how to put in a picture here of what it looks like, I'll try to. <laughs> um, but they have eyes on their wings. And so that speaks of spiritual insight, spiritual sight, vision. And so this is a time of emerging out of darkness and into a place of spiritual sight, spiritual vision for those in the body. Um, also, something very fascinating about the adult Luna Moth is that it actually lacks a fully functioning mouth. It does not even have a mouth. So once it gets to this stage, it's it no longer eats. Um, it only goes out and reproduces. That's all it does in this stage. And I, I had been um, just asking the Lord what that meant, because oftentimes when we think of a mouth, we think of, about speech, we think about eating. And so I had been um, seeking from the Lord the interpretation of that or what the significance of the moth lacking a mouth in this stage. But something uh, I felt God speaking was that the mouth of a moth actually represents destruction because it talks about in the Bible how rust can destroy things and how the moth can destroy things. And so not to store up things for ourselves here on earth, but to store up treasures in heaven where they cannot be destroyed. So the mouth of a moth represents destruction. And what the Lord had been speaking to me through that is that this, this is not a season of destruction for people in the body of Christ, that this is a, a season of productivity, of production. So rather than being a season of destruction, it is a season of production, of going forth out and producing fruit. Like that's what the time is. And in younger stages with the Luna Moth, they're eating, they're eating, they're consuming, they're consuming. And all of that energy is going into their growth. So um, for some of us in the past, we've been in that season of just consuming and, and growing and growing and, and eating, right? But this is a season where, pe where many in the body of Christ are are transitioning into that fully adult season where it's now that we can go out and produce. So instead of it being about all like consuming and taking in for ourselves so that we can grow, it's about now we're in a fully adult stage where we are going out and we are producing and we are producing and um, we are in a stage of generativity where, where we are generating for the next generation where we are like pouring forth out and producing the next generation. So it's, it's a time of production. It's a time of giving birth to the next generation and where we're taking our energy, um, instead of taking all that energy and turning it inward, we've been built up and we've grown into a new, uh, our next phase, our next season where it's time to go out and and being what God has made us to be in this season to go out and produce, it's time to produce, it's time to produce, it's time to bear fruit. That is what the adult Luna Moth does. It goes out and reproduces so that it's time to um, bear fruit and create the, create legacy and pour forth towards building what God is building and producing for the next generation. Another thing I felt was that um, be because the Luna Moth, um, it 
they were paired up. It was a male and female that were on my front porch that for some people, it also is a season of coming into marriage. So it is marriage season for some people, whether that be marriage to your human spouse or for some people, even it may be a time of marriage to the Lord. So there are some of you who you may have been in a relationship with God, which was more non-committal, just getting to know the Lord. Maybe you've fallen in love with the Lord, but you hadn't yet gone to that full commitment level where you say, God, thick or thin, um, rich or poor, God, it's me and you to the end, you know, life or death, nothing can separate us. It's me and you always together. Um, some of you, it's time to take that step. And if that's you and you've been kind of learning more about the Lord and following, falling in love with the Lord and spending time with Him, but you haven't yet come to that place of full-on commitment and being married to the Lord where you've given your life, you've given your everything to Him. For some of you, that's that. this is the season. This is the season and the time. Um, and uh, so that's really what I had to share. And so... I'm just going to pray over this word. So God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that for whoever this word is for, for those in the body of Christ you are speaking to, I pray that it would just be very clear what has been spoken today. Oh God, um, open up the ears of our understanding. Help us to receive this in fullness. May this continue to speak to us not only now, but in the coming weeks and months. Oh God, may this word just um, burst forth, grow forth, um, that we may come into into alignment and agreement with everything that you have for our lives and make the most of this season that you have given us. Oh God, may we go out and because of what you've made us to be in the way that we've been created, may we go forth and produce and do everything that you made us for according to our design, your design. Uh, may, be, may it be so, Lord, in the name of Jesus. May it be so, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, friends, and I look forward to seeing with you next time. Bye.